Thank you, Kelly. Good to have you here with us inside this stadium that uh, I think is one of the most striking, certainly as you drive towards it through the darkness. And it looks like, as it's designed to, this huge tent in the middle of nowhere. And inside it, it's an absolute seething mass of humanity. And we've got this spectacular three match ceremony going on with flames and fireworks and uh, the smoke just beginning to drift up and out of the, the roof which is retractable here it's open at the moment and out into the night sky it's interesting Peter Schmeichel listening to Ernest in Spain I always find it absolutely fascinating how other teams see their national side it's always very different isn't it to how we look at it from the outside yeah it's so uh, it's so full of emotion um, and we uh, we all we all feel with our teams we all wish the best for our teams. It's the one thing that unites us in, in the different countries is our national team. We have our clubs that we support. Of course, we're emotional about that. But this gets us all together. And um, a, lot of, a lot of the people that you speak to about their teams, they are afraid. They're a little bit scared. Can, can my team do this? Can they? And, and for instance, with Spain winning 7-0 uh, uh, the other night, was that, was that reality? Is that really the, the level of our team? And it's much better to say, okay, I lower my expectations a little bit. No, maybe, and be a little bit negative. Prepare myself for if they don't go out and win this game today. But um, the reality is that Spain has got a really, really good team. It's not as young as people think it is. The average age in, in the Spanish team is 26 years of age. Uh, of course, there are a couple of very young players, Gabi Pedri. But uh, it is quite an experienced team. Well, the teams are walking out now into this huge arena. The teams of Spain and Germany. And really, that's all you need to say to give this an introduction and a build-up. A World Cup match between Spain and Germany. Two great anthems as well to enjoy. The players of both sides turn and applaud around the stadium and now set off on the little routine, of course, that they have the, the shaking and clasping of hands. Both teams walking out with white tracksuit tops on. They'll be peeling them off very shortly and then preparing for the match. And I must say, when the draw was made for this World Cup tournament when we were here on the, the 1st of April, actually, it was, and we were down in the Doha Exhibition and Conference Centre and they, it was made on the, on the glittering stage there uh, in the middle of the city this one this match jumped right off the stage at you as one of the standout fixtures of the group stage they are two of the last three winners of the World Cup this is the only match in the groups between two former champions and I think what's happened over the course of the first seven days of the competition has only added to it well until Costa Rica's victory earlier in the day that is we thought that this could be a real nail biter tonight Peter but uh, Germany have been done a favour by Costa Rica yes but they still have to go out there and, and do the job themselves win this game and they're back in business they with confidence if they don't win there's still going to be so many question marks about them they're still going to be under that pressure as we heard from uh, Ralph Huntingstein uh, earlier on that it's not very popular that the German team is in, in this World Cup back in Germany they need to go out today and on the football pitch make a massive statement and I, th I don't think that's a bigger statement out there to be there than beating Spain who won 7-0 in their opening game so, we know now that a German defeat tonight will not be terminal, it will not knock them out. Whatever happens here, they will still have a chance of going through on Thursday, when the uh, final matches in this group, Group E, are played. And uh, remember as well, it is still the case that for Spain, a win tonight will almost guarantee a place in the last 16 because of their superior goal difference. Teams are lining up now for the start of the game. Spain with Simon in goal, Carvajal, Rodri, Laporte and Jordi Alba at the back, so the Manchester City pair in central defence again. Busquets with Gabi and Pedri either side, Ferran Torres on the right, Dani Olmo on the left and Marco Asensio through the middle. And the German side, two changes for them from Hansi Flick, Manuel Neuer 
in goal. Kilo Kera at right back. Zula and Rudiger now in central defence. So Schlotterbeck dropped out. Raum at left back. Then Kimmich with Goretzka and Gundogan in midfield. So Goretzka has come in. Havertz is on the bench tonight, which means that Thomas Muller will be through the middle with Serge Gnabry and Jamal Musiala either side of him. So uh, it is Spain against Germany. Very pleased to say that Peter Schmeichel is with us for the commentary. A record 129 caps for Denmark. A World Cup player, a European Championship winner. And we're watching a big game here tonight. As Spain get us underway in the all-red kit with the yellow trim, yellow numbers on the back. And Germany are all in white tonight, or at least the shirts do have a big black stripe down the front vertical stripe and immediately the ball is put out of play for a throw into Spain halfway inside the German half this one of the biggest stadiums three tiers all the way round I'm guessing it's something like two thirds full perhaps the uh, the actual correct capacity is up towards 70,000 as Spain head the ball forward but it's nodded up towards the halfway line and it will be headed further back by Danny Carvajal he's the one player who's come into the team tonight the, uh, the indication of Luis, Luis Enrique was that there would be changes tonight, but just the one, Carvajal coming in for Chelsea's captain, Cesar Aspilicueta. And uh, we'll see how Spain respond after their handsome victory, their record World Cup victory in their first match against uh, the uh, Costa Ricans ball is played back into central defence and uh, it's been played out towards the left hand side Daniel Moore is there and plays it back to Jordi Alba and then uh, it's lost in centre field Busquets dives in doesn't make the ball and commits the foul the referee by the way is also European Danny Makali one of the top Champions League officials from the Netherlands and he says no foul Right away we can see that Germany, they've made a tactical change from the first game. They're now playing four at the back, where they played three at the back. Sula was kind of playing to the right-hand side, which wasn't a good thing for, for Germany in the last game. But they're playing th four at the back, three in front and three, uh, uh, th uh, sorry, three midfield and three up front, matching Spain's 4-3-3 uh, uh, three, three as well. Spain nipped the ball back on the edge of the area, but it bounced up and it struck the arm of Asensio and it was, uh, his arm was out wide from his left hand side so free kick Germany Rudiger takes it away downfield a long free kick to the edge of the Spanish penalty area that Jordi Alba is able to get to Gnabry putting him under pressure there and he's put it out of play for a throw in next to the corner flag so the Germans with a throw on the right hand side for much of their opening match against Japan it looked uh, plain sailing but it was only a 1-0 victory and Japan turned it right around in the closing stages so a throw into Germany on the right hand side which is taken into the penalty area glances off Spanish head it's nodded back across the box for, uh, by Rodri and then Spain are able to take it up towards the halfway line with Danny Olmo who claims he was tugged back and referee Makali says yes you were it is a free kick to Spain inside their own half so Spain nil, Germany nil. Uh, this is a match that is, on li uh, is live on BBC TV tonight and whenever a World Cup match is live on BBC TV you can choose if you like to listen to the five live radio commentary alongside the TV pictures uh, via World Cup Extra on iPlayer that's where you find it go to iPlayer World Cup Extra and follow the simple instructions as Spain are uh, winning another free kick for a foul on Gavi in central midfield and uh, this is over towards the right hand side so Spain will have the free kick there so what we yes. just saw there was was uh, one of the, the problems that Germany have in this uh, lineup is that they actually Kimmich won the ball in midfield and was trying to release uh, Thomas Müller, but uh, as we can see or we saw here, he wasn't fast enough. So there's no real pace right at the top of the German team. Yeah, that could be a real issue, couldn't it, for them tonight? But uh, you know, I, I just feel as well with the changes that have been made. There's a there's an element of. Hansi Flick wanting to be as solid as possible against this Spanish side as well. Rudiger and Zula with the ball on the edge of their own penalty area. Back it goes to Neuer. I'm sure we'll talk about him, Peter, during the course of the evening. The great Manuel Neuer just angling the ball out towards the left-hand side. The round and round chips it forward. But he's actually chipped it straight into... Uh, Spain's path and now it's played along the edge of the penalty area a lovely change of feet on the edge of the box Ferran Torres on the right hand side played into Asensio on the edge of the box a heavy touch from Asensio it got away from him and Germany were able to clear 
Spain won the ball from a, from a mistake uh, by uh, David Raum, who I thought didn't play well in the first game, but he, he's in the team again, gave the ball away nearly in his own penalty box. Ferran Torres passed it uh, to Essential, but he missed kick or missed place to touch uh, it was actually quite a good opportunity right here at the beginning of the game it's been nil Germany nil on a uh, very pleasant night temperature wise or at least it is up here uh, there is a, what feels like a breeze blowing but you never quite know whether it's an actual breeze or whether it's just the air conditioning as the ball's played out for Spain up the left hand side and it finds its way centrally to Pedri and then forward up towards the halfway line where it's laid off by Asensio and then back again to Pedri it's very interesting to see tonight Spain against Germany who it is who dominates the possession in this match and Spain playing it back into the back line a full time score at Portman Road is Ipswich 4 Buxton nil in the end so National League North Buxton go out of the FA Cup and Ipswich of League One are into tomorrow night's third round draw and we'll have news of that on Five Live you can follow it on BBC Two tomorrow night uh, takes place at Anfield tomorrow evening the home of the FA Cup holder so the third round draw tomorrow night Spain continue to have the ball deep inside their own half and Rodri turns and passes it out to the right hand side and then uh, back it comes into the Spanish half to Carvajal there's a bit of an issue for Luis Enrique what to do when you've got Sergio Busquets and you also have Rodri and the way he's got around that is by playing Rodri in central defence alongside his Manchester City teammate Emirate Report. now the uh, still the Spanish have possession this is a long long period of Spanish possession Pedri plays it through the middle now towards the edge of the box Gabby's there with a touch Asensio plays it to the left hand side Danny Olmo with a shot that rattles against the crossbar my goodness he hit that that was an absolute screamer from Danny Olmo from an angle on the edge of the box and it rattled Neuer's crossbar and stayed out what a fantastic opportunity to go 1-0 down actually I think Manuel Neuer gets a hand to it it's a fantastic save it's all through the legs of Rudiger and I have to say the German defence is uh, all over the place. Actually, it's Kira. It goes through the legs of Kira. And Manuel Neuer makes an unbelievable save here early on. That was a terrific touch from the goalkeeper. As uh, oh, Germany, this time sliding in, down in the fullback position. Um, Kira put the challenge in. He had to make the ball there, but he did. And he put it out for a throw on the left-hand side. That's a worrying start for, for Germany. The way that Spain, you know, with that possession, Peter, you know, they, they must have had it for, what, 40, 50 passes, something like that, and it ends up with a, an end product. And, and that's what you expect when you play against a team like Spain. And that's why Hansi Flick has changed his system, so he plays forward the back. It hasn't worked out yet. They don't look settled at the back. They uh, actually, on this chance before, they were all over the place. Sula worked to slip. Um, but they, they need to settle down a little bit in defence. They play, they actually play a four at the back with two in, in front. Kimmich and uh, Goretzka sits right in front of the defence. Um, and they need to settle down a little bit. Yeah, with uh, Manchester City's Gundogan furthest forward. Playing uh, almost actually, in it, when, when Germany goes forward, playing in almost a number 10 role, the Manchester City man. There are, there are City players on both sides. Real Madrid players on both sides and RB Leipzig players on both sides as uh, Spain bring the ball away from the back four Barcelona men in this Spanish team the team at the top of La Liga going into the World Cup here uh, is one of the Real Madrid men uh, Carvajal as Carvajal and Asensio the two Real Madrid players in the squad are in the team as it comes back into central defence and Laporte just helps it out to the left hand side Jordi Alba the uh, experienced left back 33 years old now back it comes into centre field a long left footed pass from Laporte hit that beautifully that's well taken down as well by Ferran Torres up to the edge of the area but a very good challenge by Ram this time but came up got the ball doesn't bounce out of play yes it does the assistant has flagged and it's a throw into the Germans and, and that's clever play Spain are stretching they're using every inch of this pitch, uh, this pitch. so Ferran Torres is right on the touch line uh, and on the other side 
uh, Marco Asensio uh, Marco is, 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 is on the left hand side and then Danny Olmo is in the middle or they alternate a- around but they're stretching the German team they're putting a lot of pressure on and that uh, diagonal ball is on all the time and I think we'll see that a lot tonight the early signs are a little worrying I think for Germany and for Hansi Flick and the Spanish team will draw that confidence from the opening win against Costa Rica with them here to Alcor which is the area the part of uh, Qatar in which this stadium has been built the Albert Stadium designed to look like a veteran camp but the Germans Gundogan that was a nice touch from him and Muller's now taking it on towards the edge of the box and it's laid into Gnabry but out comes Timo and makes a, a good save and actually the offside flag is up after the ball was uh, carried forward centrally actually by Goretzka just to correct myself but it is an offside flag and that was a fantastic opportunity for, uh, for Germany to counter Spain so Musiala fell in deep made a nice little touch uh, uh, to Kimmich I think it was who passed it up to Muller who then ran towards the goal and I think he, he, he picked the wrong option he should have gone back to Musiala he, he uh, opted to play to uh, Goratska who unfortunately for Germany were in uh, an offside position but uh, Unai Simon ended up saving him good for him good start yep so Germany that's the counter Spain had the shot but hit the crossbar was saved against the crossbar Germany have now had a chance at their own with Gnabry but it's Spain who come forward still nil-nil very early stages here here's the ball to the right hand side for Ferran Torres down in the German left back position round comes across but just uh, stands off Ferran Torres and he uses Danny Carvajal behind him Champions League winner of course several times over through the middle it is now Pedri out to that left flank for Spain Danny Olmo is there and then uh, in it comes infield towards Asensio who's dropping deep again that's a feature of his play and uh, Spain go all the way back into the centre circle and uh, just knock it around the little triangles from Spain we've seen this from them for year after year after year it's very much the Spanish style that led them to those great successes in the, uh, the World Cup and the Euros three tournaments running ball out towards the left hand side which is taken down by Olmo and then back into central defence to Laporte again and Laporte just shifts it onto his left foot and here's that pass that Peter was talking about out to the right hand side which is headed in field by Ferran Torres the Germany have got it back that's into the centre circle for them Gundogan was surrounded by red shirts it's been nicked off him Busquets gives it forward to Asensio Asensio now out to the left hand side to Olmo Olmo running at Kera and there's a collision between them on the edge of the box the ball ran away Olmo looks at referee McAlee who was saying no play on he's having none of that at all and uh, Germany have been able to get it away and it's nice to have a referee who, uh, who doesn't you know blow his whistle every time somebody goes down uh, and, and you can see the reaction of the players is that they're just getting on with it uh, Germany again coming forward and uh, Spain will deal with that report just uh, shepherds the ball to the edge of the box and gives it to the goalkeeper uh, Simon the athletic Bilbao goalkeeper so David De Gea Peter of your old club Manchester United very much not in the international picture Luis Enrique has been very firm about that and Unai Simon is his man he has been um, playing every game in the last two years and one of the reasons for that is what we're seeing now that he actually is a very good football player so he can be that extra man in the build up ball comes back at the Spanish defence now back into midfield where uh, Goretzka is able to take it up Rudiger plays it to the left hand side now round coming forward we're going to see him in that sense for the first time in the match Musiala turns onto his right foot but just a little touch in there took it away from him from Gavi and now Spain bring it forward with Pedri they're the, uh, they're the legs aren't they on either side of Busquets Pedri on one side and Gavi on the other the two youngsters but Spain go all the way back to goalkeeper Simon all in black down there to our left we talk a lot about Pedri and, uh, and Gavi they are exciting players you know they're young we, we can't wait for you know what the future holds for those two but there's also Musiala on the other side uh, the Bayern Munich player 19 years of age he starts again he was, I thought he was really, really good against Japan. He had that little move where he, you know, it was he kind of danced 
through the uh, the, the Japan defence, and it was only the finish that wasn't uh, up to scratch. But that is what Germany hopes that he can uh, do more of today. He's had a couple of opportunities already, uh, and uh, you know I'm I'm very excited to see him on the pitch. Yeah, likewise, we've had a chance to watch him recently, so I've seen a little bit of him live when uh, when England were in the same group in the Nations League as Germany and Musiala, who could have played for England. A bit like Musa, who we were watching the other night, who I was very impressed with, but now playing for the United States. So more on Musiala in a moment, but it is Spain with Ferran Torres, who plays it now forward for Gavi, who's chasing after it, but he won't reach that. It was just slightly overhit by Ferran Torres, so it is behind for a German full kick. But the other thing, I got a chance to have a little chat with him, actually, as well, Musiala, and... What a, what a nice lad he seemed to be. Really, really sort of humble touch. And, you know, he's got the world at his feet. He, he comes across uh, very uh, sympathetic in interviews. He, he, he talks well. But the, I've seen this with younger players that comes out of Bayern Munich. Uh, that, they, that there is some kind of, I don't know if it's an education or what, but they are they are well taught. Uh, another player, for instance, Piani Hoiber, plays for Denmark, who also went to uh, Bayern Munich's academy. They have this lack. I don't know what it is, but it's it's a uh, it's nice to see young players with that. And then, of course, he backs it up with really good performances. Yeah, very, very good player as well. Formerly of the Southampton and Chelsea academies. So uh, that is Jamal Musiala. But the ball is up to the, the great Thomas Muller. I think we can call him that. But uh, not so great because he came back from an offside position. So uh, it's a free kick to Spain inside their own half. Spain nil, Germany nil. Already 15 minutes played. And just a reminder, if you haven't heard, this is the group involving Costa Rica and Japan. Costa Rica won earlier today. So coming into this match, Spain with three points. Japan with three points. Costa Rica with three points. And Germany with none so far. So it could, it could be three points all round going into the uh, the final round of matches. Musiala takes the ball in centre for midfield and has a little dart forward with it. That was good. Positive stuff from him. Taking on the Spaniards. Back it comes to Rudiger. And Rudiger, playing in Spain, of course, for Real Madrid, turns it to his left to round. Uh, Rudiger makes himself available and then turns and gives it back to to Neuer in the D on the edge of his own penalty area they've not kept too many clean sheets in recent times the Germans the, uh, the match pre-tournament was their first in eight matches round stretching for this but he can't reach it and it's out of play for a throw into Spain and, and it's something they need hand. to improve on they need to improve on their defence I, I thought the two goals they gave away uh, against Japan they, they both of them could have been avoided uh, most of all with a little bit of concentration uh, especially the second goal the number of mistakes that you could count Ooh. in that ball played across his own penalty area that was that was very risky but it's fortunately for Spain headed back by Laporte to his goalkeeper Carvajal trying to sort of with the outside of his boots spray it across the edge of his own penalty area and very nearly presented it to Germany but, uh, but they've got away with that it was a bit silly that wasn't it but uh, how cool was Laporte it just bounced up in the air and he headed it back to his goalkeeper under pressure and the goalkeeper was under pressure just caught it and then Spain is on the move again <laughs> yeah, but, you know, when you've got two Manchester City players in central defence if there's one if there are the players of one team that you would back to be able to cope with that it is Pep Guardiola's players throwing to Spain over on the far side this is taken down by Pedri Ooh, Busquets that was a little short as well but he's done well there he had Germans either side of him but was able to stick out one of those extremely long legs and Spain have got it back and bring it forward on the right hand side and then in comes the challenge from round and Ferran Torres one off Manchester City and it's out of play for throwing just in front of uh, Hansi Flick down there who uh, was the former Bayern Munich coach who actually gave Musiala his debut and now he's his national team coach round with a throw down the line he's thrown it straight off the pitch you don't often see that <laughs> no you don't see that at this level that doesn't happen very yes, often but he did you see he's just hitched up his shoulder there as if to say oh, just had a, I just had a bit of a change there that's what happened there. just going back to Rudy I think th this is a very very big game for him because as we've already covered that you know the defence against Japan wasn't great Sulu who has a ball now uh, he, he didn't have a great game so far he's not been you know that good he, he had on the big chance before he slipped Rudiger needs to be the leader there he needs to control and help the other defenders um, 
of course with with the experience of Neuer behind uh, and Rudiger he has got that we've seen that in uh, Chelsea added at Real Madrid as Peter Schmeichel did us on Five Live tonight and BBC Sounds take the World Cup with you with BBC Sounds throughout the tournament as Germany now in a very congested area on the halfway line and then Ram and Carvajal into the challenge together but it's the Spaniard who got the touch all the way back to Simo yeah it's Musiala again who's, uh, who's challenging the Spanish players and he looks good he, he thought he'd be, he was a foul he's a little bit frustrated with the referee uh, that he didn't get a free kick but the referee tonight is letting play go and I like that yeah I like it also staying with the ball on the left hand side it almost always makes for a decent game and uh, I think you've got to be a confident referee to do that and uh, the ball is with Laporte halfway inside his own half Laporte just turning it back to Simo behind him so still no goals and the closest we've come was the shot from Danny Olmo that was very well touched with his uh, with one glove onto the crossbar by Manuel Neuer Germany with her on the halfway line and it is Kimmich Joshua Kimmich one of six Bayern Munich players in this German starting lineup today and now to the right hand side to uh, Kera of West Ham who turns and gives it back to Neuer and there's been a lot of talk about Kimmich maybe going back to right back today uh, in order to you know to get get the defense sorted out um, but he said himself yesterday there's no way he's going back to right back he's a midfield player and that's my position yeah that's where he wants to be uh, Kimmich and uh, Spain Busquets turns the ball into the space it's been taken forward by Pedri to the edge of the area lovely feet from him bounces back to him and now a turn from Gabby on the edge of the penalty area but Zula was there behind it and as it ran to him he just whacked it away to the halfway line yeah you see the influence there the three the midfielders Busquets, Pedri and Gabby combining in there together and very well defended by the German back four and Busquets now to Jordi Alba who cuts in field on his right foot shoots and it this is low and wide of the foot of Neuer's right post, but it was wide probably by two or three feet. Jordi Alba on his right foot, we don't see that very often, and it was like Neuer was scrambling a little bit, but I can see now on the replay that he knows it's going past, he's, he's driving for it, but then he's taking his hands away, he knows it's going on the right side of the post. Manuel Neuer, 36 years old now, what a career he's had, one of the World Cup winners of course from 2014, Germany the winners 2014, Spain the winners in 2010, Germany coming forward now but that's given away rather carelessly on the right hand side and Spain bring it forward, actually he's been taken out towards the right hand side here by uh, Pedri who does well, they've enjoyed that, the, uh, the neutral supporters, the talent that he showed there and then a foul by uh, Ferran Torres and a free kick to How good is Pedro? I mean, <laughs> that was fantastic. He, he was given the ball uh, in his own half in the centre circle and he went right and more right and more right and uh, at the end of that move, uh, unfortunately for him he lost the ball, he uh, not made David Brown. But uh, that technique, it's brilliant to see, isn't it? Put back pass to uh, Simon, uh, who takes a heavy touch and was able to follow up and clear that away. The first thing to take a skip there, because it was on its way to it. But that's one thing about the, uh, the the actual football that's been played with in, in the World Cup. It's a bit lively. It's it's a uh, it's, it's sort of like um, we, we, we've we've actually seen from from uh, a few incidents where a side foot doesn't take the spin and therefore you know even if it's two yards away players don't get it Sorry. and I, I think it's designed to um, for, for the players to have shots from distance yeah. Yeah. I'm sure as a goalkeeper Peter that's not absolutely ideal is no it? it's not and, no. And, and, and another thing there is very little grip on the ball Germany win it back and every on the right hand side comes in field but that's given us a free kick and that's what Spain that's what um, I think that's what Pedri is saying over there that he was uh, Jordi Alba was saying that he was fouled by Gnabry and the referee agrees and he's brought it back that's the first time he's given a free kick for something like that it's not a free kick it actually it's, it's a free kick the other way to be fair it's a free kick for Germany but um you ask for it, if you don't ask, you don't get it. Yep. You ask for it, you got it. Spain, nil. Germany, nil. And uh, Germany, when it back, Rohan just threw himself at the ball and was quite fortunate, actually, to inter 
to uh, to cut it out before it reached Carvajal. Now Muller, Muller into the penalty area, but away from Gundogan. Oh, given away by Simon. Gnabry now, brilliant turn, left foot shot across the face of goal, but beyond the far post. Well played Gnabry, poor clearance from the keeper though. Okay, we've been uh, we've been praising Simon, saying that he's playing because he's very good at his feet. In the last three minutes, he's had three situations where he's shown the exact opposite. We just talked about the, the one that probably took the heavy touch. But then he gave the ball away. Uh, unnecessary before. He's trying to play it out from from uh, from inside the six-yard box out to the right fullback. That was intercepted. And now he gave the ball away inside the 18-yard box. Um, and, and actually showed a little bit of... Uh, insecurity in, in, the, in the Spanish defence. We haven't seen them under pressure in this World Cup yet, but by the looks of that, if you put a little bit of pressure on them, well, there are vulnerabilities there. David Brown, the left back, who, remember, jumped for that ball and cut it out, um, seems to have a problem. And I think, I think he might have just actually caught the ball in his uh, midriff, if you get my drift. Uh, he maybe just took a kick actually from Carvajal as well but uh, anyway he's okay and I think he's going to be able to continue uh, our little television here showed us two of the great former Spanish players Carlos Puyol and David Villa sitting together in the comfortable seats Peter I don't know whether you ever find your way into those comfortable seats at this World Cup I have a feeling you might do as <laughs> Germany have the ball inside their own half might be doing that tomorrow in fact I was uh, I was there last night no okay, yes. and are they comfortable um, oh it's given away by Neuer that is careless and now Olmo across the edge of the box Ferran Torres with the shot but it was blocked at source defender came across and uh, Neuer gets out of jail I'm so not sure speak. what's going on here I mean Neuer attempts a very difficult pass over two Spanish players with his left foot but Raum who uh, was just out before which looks to be a little bit of a groin strain came back and blocked the shot I don't know what's going on here with the goalkeepers why are they attempting the most difficult things the, the thing is for what happened to Germany in, in the Japan game the goals they conceded what they need now is to settle down in defence and don't give anything stupid away and Neuer who is the most experienced in that team should know that best of everyone and in that situation that was just silly he got away with it though it's Peter Schmeichel this is Spain nil Germany nil and uh, Zula has the ball on the edge of his own penalty area and now uh, Rudiger as the ball is played across the penalty area has to turn Ferran Torres putting him under pressure Rudiger pulls it away drags it over the top of the ball turns round up to the halfway line but uh, Muller's not reaching that Spain have taken possession and, and Simon was halfway between the penalty area and the uh, centre circle to come and intercept it and then Round puts in a challenge that leaves Carvajal on the floor I think that's a little bit of retribution from Round on Carvajal after the earlier incident yeah it could be uh, but what, what is really impressive to, to uh, experience when you are at the stadium it's very difficult to see that on the TV screen is how good these players are receiving the ball under pressure there's not a single player on the pitch now that will not receive the ball uh, and, and do something good about it. Rudiger did it before under pressure. No, he couldn't pass it back to Neuer, so he passed it out to Raum, who was under pressure by two players, and he still got the ball and got it up the pitch. It's very, very impressive to watch. Uh, ball back with Neuer on the edge of the six-yard box, and uh, Asensio was, was close to him, but he was able, Neuer, there to turn and clear it away. Uh, Muller's lost out on a challenge on the halfway line, but gets to his feet, wins the ball back now it's being pulled forward by Kera. Gnabry is there as well Kera continues his run but it's been overrun by Gnabry, he's a little fortunate in that it's bounced back to him but then bounces away from him and then through the middle, Rudiger just steps in and says, right, that's enough of that, carry on and just clatters it away downfield scrappy little period of play after what Scrap, yeah, and, and uh, you know Gnabry continues uh, his, his, the way he played against Japan, he missed three big chances didn't, I didn't think he had a good game and I, I kind of expected him not to play today and uh, so far he's not he's not played very well what he does 
which is you know beneficial for the team is of course he takes part of that first bit of pressure and he's very good at that but with the ball today it's just given away uh, with a free kick that was a cheap one center field to the germans but um they'll take it certainly and uh, free kick is tapped short in the center circle by Kinnick to his right Zula is going to have a little wonder forward with the ball at his feet and now he plays it to the right hand side Kilo Kera is there Kera in field again Zula still up there here's the cross looking for Musiala inside the penalty area I beg his pardon Musiala he is now on the left hand side Musiala picks up the ball Musiala then taps it back now to Rudiger on his right foot I've seen him hit them from here before but I've seen him hit them better than that he got right underneath it and sailed it away high over the crossbar and it landed halfway up the lower tier of the stand I've seen him hit them before as well better but I've also seen him do that it's 35 yards out yeah why not have a, you know, have a shot give the goalkeeper something to think about give the defender something to think about because he might find himself in a similar situation uh, later on in the game and then there might be other options I thought that was a foul on Asensio but the referee hasn't given it plays continued and then the, the ball actually ricochets to the edge of the D but Simon was out ever so quickly the goalkeeper the Spanish goalkeeper to put in the challenge a sort of sliding clearance ahead of Muller fantastic awareness by the goalkeeper that, yeah, that could have been a free chance for, for Muller but the goalkeeper he read the situation very well got out five yards out of his box and cleared the ball it's normally a goalkeeper like Unai Simon 25 years old he's playing for the Spanish national team and is uh, clearly highly thought of by Luis Enrique you think well he'll, he'll be heading to one of the top European clubs you know and away from his home club of uh, Athletic Bilbao but seemingly he wants to uh, to stay there for us for the rest of his career as Germany have got a problem because uh, it is Goretzka who is just labouring he's actually gone down on his haunches leaning forward play continues Spain with a throw in the left back position and then uh, it's played out to the right by Muller Gnabry and Kera are there they can't keep it in Spain and it's another throw three or four yards away from the corner flag just going back to Goretzka I'm not sure what happened there but he seems okay no no he's leaning forward again and he, he does not look in the best shape he's definitely ailing for, in some way throwing to Germany but it's played back by Kimmich all the way to the far side but Spain are able to get it away but Zula has got that for the Germans as they play Germany in this first half from right to left and Rudiger gives the ball back to Zula and then through the middle the poor pass centre field that gives it back to Spain but it bounces for uh, Goretzka who went into the challenge was, then, was upended ended up on the turf again then it comes back to Busquets near the edge of his penalty area and now uh, Rodri just takes a couple of touches to give it to the right hand side to Carvajal who will begin to move forward towards the halfway line but then checks in field and Spain have got it inside their own half this referee doesn't want to get free kicks it's amazing how much he's letting go and he's got to be a little bit careful because there's there's a needle, little bit of needle between one or two of the players and this could get out of hand if he doesn't calm it down a little bit yeah there's uh, a lot of very very familiar faces there and as I say club mates as well those sort of rivalries the ball is played forward down the left hand side Danny Olmo is into this and Olmo across and Ferran Torres blasts it over the bar with his left foot from 10 yards yards out there was one defender there who came across but that was a clear opportunity yeah it wouldn't have counted it was offside he was about four five yards offside well one yard <laughs> but the, the linesman this i don't understand this rule you know why are they letting it go it's a it's a great opportunity uh yes but anything can happen in that move the player can get injured why everyone can see that that is offside why does he just flag that's what they're told to do. You yeah. know what happens. You don't understand happens the in the world of officials if you don't yeah, do what yeah. you're told to do. But when it's when it's that clear. However, Spain nil, Germany nil. He should have buried it, Ferran Torres. Regardless, and he didn't. He put it over the crossbar by a foot or so. Uh, the rolls out of play on the far side, throwing to Spain, and. Uh, it's taken down on the halfway line by Busquets who nimbly just steps to his right another World Cup winner on the field down there 
at the age of 34, Sergio Busquets, and then rather exaggerated fall by Ferran Torres, but he's won the free kick nevertheless. And uh, Carvajal will come up to take it, just spins the ball down on the turf. And we have 10 minutes to go to half time. Spain nil, Germany nil. So were it to stay like this, Spain would have four points at the top of the group. Germany would be bottom of the group with one point. And it would be very tight in the final set of matches. Balls played over the top for Spain. Danny Olmo in the inside left position. Zula puts in the challenge and it's bounced away behind and we have the first corner of the match to Spain. What a great ball over the top. Um, and, and great defender by, uh, by Zula. Came, he came back very, very quickly. I, I, I was just, because the referee went, he ran all the way back to the halfway line. He's given a corner kick, and I don't know why he did that, or he's now back in his position. But this is where, you know, Germany, they have to be very, very careful. They like to defend up high, but they've got to be aware of those runs and the passes. Here comes the corner, and it's reached Ferran Torres at the back of the penalty area. Got the ball under control, but while he did, it was closed down by Muziala, actually it was, who threw himself in front of it and deflected it wide for a corner from the other side, so the Spanish right. He's th here, there and everywhere, Ferran Torres. What a great player he's turning out to be. Uh, he's already scored two goals. Okay, yeah, well, he was offside a minute ago. He could have scored his third one had it, had it counted. But, uh, I mean, uh, I'm very impressed by the Spanish players, how technically well they are. And they're always in good positions. And Ferran Torres, he's got the ball again here. Corner taken short. Danny Olmo with the cross, but it's headed away from near the penalty spot by Zula. And Spain go all the way back into their own half. I think the referee, when he went back to the halfway line, the suggestion is that uh, Imerick Laporte sort of kicked out when that throw was being taken on the touchline, maybe just to have a little word with Laporte for that reason. So forward again it goes, that bounces nicely for Spain, but that's a, that's a heavy challenge, centre field, by uh, Kera, and it's a yellow card for that challenge. He, he did rather dive in and bring down... Ferran Torres just four to the centre circle so the first yellow card of the match and it's Tilo Kera this is what I'm talking about they have to the, the German players must concentrate every second of this match so so Timo Kera got he fell asleep here didn't didn't see uh, Ferran Torres behind him and it was a cross field ball that he didn't read Ferran Torres got the ball and was running towards uh, yeah, towards the goal actually uh, and then he obviously had to chase him and he took him down a silly yellow coat, uh, card to get um, and, and uh, you know just an example of how dangerous the Spanish team is it's actually the first yellow card for either Spain or Germany at this World Cup Tilo Kera it, uh, it, I find it quite disconcerting that they announced the yellow cards on the public address system in the stadium long pass forward I think Gnabry's offside as well yeah he is that was quite early by their standards the offside flag he, I think he decided there that he it was, he actually couldn't do anything other than flag that as offside, so we did see the flag. It would have been silly, he was miles off, so <laughs> it would have been silly not to do that. 37 minutes played, Spain nil, Germany nil. This is uh, the World Cup 2022 on Five Live from the BBC. The match is on BBC TV tonight, you can watch it if you're on your way home at the moment. And uh, as I say, if you wish to, you could continue to listen to me and Peter uh, on World Cup Extra on iPlayer along with the pictures all synced up together. Free kick for Germany, which is played back by Rudiger to Neuer, who's made one really good save in this first half. Early on as well, a really sharp touch from the, a terrific shot as well from Danny Olmo. Nice header, centre field by Gundogan. Then it's played out to Gnabry on the right-hand side by Muller. Muller makes ground through the middle and then Gnabry is challenged by Jordi Alba. Went down, the ball runs out of play. I think that is just giving us a throw-in, isn't it? Right, so, so this should be the second yellow card of, uh, of in this game because Jordi Alba brought Gnabry down. Gnabry would have been absolutely free on, on the right-hand side free to go into the box, free to cross the ball uh, I don't understand why he's not getting a yellow card for that but Germany, they have a free kick and a very, very good and promising position Yeah, out on the right hand side after Jordi Alba conceded the free kick so uh, there are two options over there 
Spain holding their line on the edge of the penalty area. And the delivery from Kimmich. Here it is, into the edge of the penalty area. And it's headed down and in by Rudiger. Germany take the lead. That's just what they wanted. Hansi Flick celebrates on the edge of his coaching area. And the goal comes from the set piece. And Spain concede for the first time at this World Cup. Spain nil, Germany won. Terrible defending by Spain. Trying to hold a high line. Not looking at Rudiger whatsoever. I, I think this might go to VAR. Because I felt that he, Rudiger was slightly offside. And it's gone. Check. You're right, Peter. They are checking for uh, offside and the goal is disallowed well that was that was super quick that is the semi-automated system working and it's uh, it's right well spotted he, he was offside there's no doubt about that Laporte nearly played him onside Laporte was the only of the Spanish players following the uh, German players in and he nearly made that mistake um, Unfortunately for Germany, but what a great header that was. So the uh, the German celebrations are cut short by the semi-automated VAR decision, the offside decision, and it remains Spain nil, Germany nil. And that's my, I have to say, Peter, that's my first experience in a football stadium with the, the new semi-automated offside. And if that's how it works, we know that there was controversy. It almost goes without saying when uh, it was the opening match, wasn't it? The, uh, when it was used, and now they're explaining it on the big screens inside the ground as well and showing the graphics. But that, um, you know, if it's going to work like that and work well, yeah, that's good, isn't it? I like, I like the speed of it. Um, normally, you wait. Oh, oh given away by Carvajal, but then a heavy touch by Gnabry on the edge of the area. That's a real wasted opportunity by Germany there. And Spain break forward. The ball is played out towards the left-hand side. Danny Olmo is there. Then there's the overlap from Jordi Alba, who crosses it into the defender, Zula, and it bounces behind to a Spanish corner. It was nearly a free chance for Germany. Uh, Müller got the ball, passed it to, uh, to, uh, to uh, Gnabry, but his touch was so heavy. And, and I go back to what I said before, he was one of the players I expected not to play today, and so far, he has not played very well. Corner then, for Spain on the far side, half-time approaching, four minutes to go, we'll have more reaction to, uh, well, all the day sport coming up, but certainly the World Cup matches. Ball into the near post, Rudiger got there to head it away, did well, had to make ground to get there, and it's deflected out of play for a throw into Spain, off Musiala. 10 yards back from the corner flag on the right hand side Danny Carvajal thickly bearded at the moment picks up the ball and uh, just looks for the, the various options takes it short Carvajal makes himself available but Raum is in on the challenge and then Raum throws himself to the ground ridiculously and play continues ball's played back by Muller Raum who of course is back on his feet now then clears to the halfway line it's headed forward by Laporte to the edge of the box Zula was underneath that up it goes from Gaffey to the edge of the penalty area and then it will bounce over the left hand side but um, back centrally with Asensio Busquets then plays the ball with such composure from foot to foot what a sure touch that was wasn't it just uh, absolute certainty and then the little ball out towards the left hand side and now Pedri what a bonus it must be for Luis Enrique to be able to name, name this Barcelona midfield three as his midfield three for the Spanish international team. Yeah, there's bags of talent in there. Still nil-nil if you just joined us. Half-time approaching. Ball played up towards Muller, who um, hasn't had a lot of change, has he, out of Rodri and Laporte. Thomas Muller as is the, is the centre forward with Kai Havertz left out tonight. Yeah, I think he's, he's done quite well because... One of the things he needs to do for the team is to stay patient and stay high. Normally we know Muller, he will be, uh, you know, everywhere in the last third. But he's stayed central. He's, he's kept Rodri and uh, Laporte uh, around him, which I think is very good for the team because players like Musiala has got the ball now. That's strong, strong, play. Play. strong play from Musiala to take it away from one man. And then Busquets put the challenge, brought him down. That's a yellow card. Busquets is booked. So that's one apiece now. And uh, 
I think I think that's a fair decision, bearing in mind that Muziala was away from him. Yeah, it was a fair decision, and you could you could have put him back in. <laughs> and Busquets being the first Spanish player to get a yellow card, he, he's done this so many times. He does it for the team, um, and now. Muziala is in that you know, area all the time around Busquets. He's got to challenge him now. Busquets, who's playing in his fourth World Cup. That's class, isn't it? It's high quality. We were talking, weren't you? Weren't we? You and I before the match. And I was asking you how many World Cups you played in, but it was just just France '98. And uh, well, well, we'll we'll maybe tell the story. But you bumped into a man who brought up some old memories for you. But Germany has got this free kick just forward of the centre circle that Kimmich will take which he does and Rudig has peeled away to the right hand side takes it down and shoots and Simon rather juggles it pa sort of patted it away and he patted it onto the head of the defender and rather obliging the, the ball hit the head of the defender and bounced back into his gloves that was a really really well worked set piece the, the, the free kick was from 45 yards out Spain was defending only like 15 yards away very very high up the pitch and they worked it to uh, Rudiger went to the back post when he got the ball he hammered it in and that's why the goalkeeper lost it in the first place two minutes of time to be played at the end of the first half we're into that now still nil nil Spain nil Germany nil Germany who had a goal ruled out for offside the Rudiger had it Spain have got it deep inside German territory here's Danny Olmo Danny Olmo he scored Spain's first goal in the demolition of Costa Rica in the opening match. Back to the halfway line. Now played to his right by Rodri. And Laporte is there. And then uh, it's dragged back. And uh, Spain will start again from the centre circle. Now it comes to the right-hand side, to Carvajal. And then uh, the two central defenders once again find one another. Jordi Alba's ball in, Danny Olmo turns, challenged by Kera. that's a free kick, so it looks as though the first half is going to draw to a close with a set-piece opportunity for Spain for a free kick halfway inside their half, out on the left-hand side. Yeah, it's an opportunity, set-pieces are in modern-day football opportunities. Uh, and we had just been shown a replay of that goal that was disallowed and it was very clearly offside so that was the right decision, no doubt about that Spain has got a similar opportunity now, not from the same position but Germany are defending this very, very high up the pitch maybe about 30 yards from goal yeah, certainly almost 10 yards outside the box it's taken short and then clipped into the back post where it is headed across then nodded further into the penalty area and there's a little glance and it's rattling around the box Gavi is onto this and Gavi sees his effort blocked behind for a corner I think we'll just about have time for that to be taken make it 10 seconds of the first half still to be played at the two minutes of added time you've got two very small Spanish players absolutely terrorising Rudiger and, and Zuli in that defence um, and it's the only time in the last sort of 15-20 minutes that, that Germany has looked a little bit unsettled at the back Danny Olmo to take this one from the, the right hand side so way down to our right Danny Olmo into the edge of the six yard box it's headed out but it is headed out to Pedri but that's it that's the end of the first half spin nil Germany nil is the score really important save from Manuel Neuer early on in the half from uh, Danny Olmo shot Germany a couple of opportunities for Gnabry and obviously the, the Rudiger header that was ruled offside that he did get into the net but uh, there's not a lot in it Peter no there's not a lot in it we, we, we're watching two of the best teams in the world play they have they have actually played very well we've been treated to to some very good uh, football play uh, not a lot of uh, chances created um, but it's the, the football has been good to watch and I think that both managers will be in that dressing room quite happy with what they've seen from the first half yep Spain nil Germany nil last time they played it was 6 nil Spain won 6 nil last time these sides met but uh, this is a very close affair so that is it Spain nil Germany nil thank you Kelly the, uh, the teams are out certainly Spain have got the full complement up and uh, so have Germany as well so Spain with Simon in goal Carvajal, Rodri, Laporte and Jordi Alba Busquets, Gavi and Pedri in midfield Torres, Asensio and Olmo
and here comes the last man for Germany now yes so they have now got the full 11 Tilo Kera is the last man out of the dressing rooms and uh, onto the field and the referee is given the nod Germany then with Neuer in goal Kera, Zula, Rudiger and Raum the back four three man midfield for this of Kimmich, Goretzka and Gundogan furthest forward and then Gnabry, Muziala and Muller we've got a false start at the start of the second half uh, the referee, Danny Makali of the Netherlands, says, come on, Germany, take it again, which uh, they do. I'm having to start my stopwatch again, which I've managed to do. So the ball is played up towards the edge of the Spanish penalty area. Muziala is able to turn it away. The teenager on his right foot comes infield, then turns and goes outfield again to the uh, wider area the cross from round but that's a comfortable catch from Simon in the middle so uh, Peter Schmeichel what are we expecting do you think in the second half I think a little bit of the same the same as we saw in the first half Spain will try but they're not going to commit 100% to try to win this game they will feel they don't really need to take that risk because there, there are risks we've just seen Musial I don't think he was aware of how free he was he, 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 he was actually inside the box had he turned the other way he would have seen the goal and nobody else but he turned left and went around and then of course uh, nothing came of that but I think Germany again they know that they've got Costa Rica in the last last game and they should be able to beat them and they will probably say if we can't that we've got no plays here so a point here is uh, it's in their own hands and so I think stay tight, stay you know solid at the back, don't give anything away, uh, and then if the chance appears, then we'll take it. Spain coming forward on the left-hand side, Tony Olmo did well, and it's flicked to Asensio, and Asensio sprints down the left wing with the ball and gets it into the middle, but too close to goalkeeper Moya in the six-yard box, he was able to go down and gather that quite comfortably yeah a little bit of confusion between Suli and Kela on the halfway line here's one for Muller to chase through the middle for Germany advanced across his body he's flicked it back across but Jordi Alba was able to uh, deal with it actually and he's saying Jordi Alba where's the offside flag and then it comes so a free kick to, uh, to Spain yeah, we're not going to waste any time on talking about that rule anymore. no we'll, we'll leave. just stay for the you know for now and forever it's silly yeah uh, what I would point out is that uh, just to remind everyone that the teams that get through from this group uh, so Spain, Germany, Japan, Costa Rica they will play the two that go through from the Belgium, Morocco, Croatia uh, group Canada will not go through so it will be Morocco, Belgium, Croatia who two from those three which is interesting because Mor Morocco have a chance they've got their final match against Canada Belgium play Croatia and it's entirely possible that Morocco could win that group but we'll see what happens so um, but listen when it comes to a, trying, a World Cup or sure. a tournament you can't pick your opponents can I'm you? I'm not sure that, 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 that necessarily is a good draw I think no. Morocco has been Very one good. of the big big positive surprises in this tournament and how they played today you know is very very impressive so you know that the, they are growing as a footballing nation and they're growing with confidence as well so I don't see why that necessarily is a good job sure. yeah, well you know it is sometimes a case of be careful what you wish for I remember very well England ending up with Iceland at Euro 2016 and, and everyone knows what happened next I wasn't going to mention that no well that's very kind of you Spain nil Germany nil Asensio plays it toward uh, Daniel Olmo but really good will get there easily just to slide the ball back to Neuer who clears it from the penalty area to Zula passes it up the line to Gnabry and then in comes the challenge on him but Gnabry was looking for that threw himself down uh, and eventually it's out of play for what he's given as a throw to Spain so 0-0 uh, very early stages uh, Spain get a point they'll be top of the group and they will know that if they win against Japan on the, uh, on the final night in this group they will go through as group winners but uh, let's see what happens over the course of the next 45 minutes first it's at the back with Laporte who gives it back to goalkeeper Simon on the edge of his six yard box he is he is uber confident in possession Simon there was a couple of moments ago when he had two Germans maybe four or five yards away either side of him and just very coolly played it between the two of them and then uh, Spain don't get it away actually playing it out and it is uh, not infield towards Gundogan who went down and he does get the free kick not too far away from the left corner of the penalty area Busquets who's already been booked protests 
but it's a free kick and a good position for Germany. And it's a really good bit of pressure from uh, from Germany, keeping the Spanish team in their own half, nearly by the corner flag actually. And their rewards for, for that bit of pressure is a free kick in a promising situation. This this you know, it's a little bit long, uh, long distance to have a shot at goal, but it's possible with the right footer. The right but, position as well. Isn't yes, it? Yeah, but you could, this is probably going to be a cross. But it's a great position to be in. Kinnick looks as though. It, well, it could be an in-swinger, or it could be a delivery to the back post, let's see. They've left both options open. Spain are holding their line outside the penalty area. The free kick's on the left. The referee says, come on, let's have it. And Kimmich plays it in beyond the back line, and it's a poor delivery. Poor. So poor delivery. Um, had it been a good delivery, they would have been a sat offside again. Very, very brave play by, uh, by Spain. Normally, you know, they would, you would follow the players that runs into the box. You follow them in, but every single one of them just stood still and let the Germans run into that trap. But it was a bad delivery, and nothing came off it. Nope, Spain have got it. Spain nil, Germany nil, inside their own half on this uh, very, very mild night inside the stadium with the air conditioning certainly you wouldn't describe it as hot it's just the perfect temperature that's how it feels sitting high up here floodlights brightly on these stadiums are brilliantly lit it must be said and, and this one that we're sitting in here which is way up in the north we're on the fringes of the desert here in fact uh, the uh, you know round about an hour to get back into central Doha from where we're sitting and we're watching Spain playing the ball forward into centre midfield and then it finds its way to Jordi Alba who's got space in front of him and he takes it on now but then checks back because Gnabry is there next to him and Spain in the, the red kit with the yellow numbers on played to Danny Olmo way down in front of Luis Enrique who's pacing around he's almost all in black tonight Luis Enrique and still Spain have possession Busquets stretches for it then plays it forward now it's been carried deep into German territory by Pedri or it was until the challenge came in from Kera which put it out for a throw just in front of the Spain dugout throwing taken by Jordi Alba back to Pedri and now into the centre circle to Rodri and then uh, Spain advance down the right flank with Carvajal but uh, it comes to nothing Germany clear again to the halfway line it's nodded forward and a flicked in field but that's to Gundogan and Gundogan goes for the early ball over the top but Gennady won't reach that just had too much on it from the Manchester City midfielder and Simon was able to take the bouncing ball on the edge of his penalty area yeah that's got to be spot on that pass if that's going to come off uh, with a goalkeeper that uh, proactive in, in whatever happens on the pitch um, but but it, it, again, it's, it's it's brilliant to watch Spain how they how they play how they move. We're sat very very high up, so so how we see it it, it, it really is good to see. But there are opportunities for German. We think they're German if they, get, if they get the ball. Those passes are on all the time. Danny Olmo receives it on the left hand side, takes on Kara, gets past him, but the ball bounces away off the the Spaniard's right foot and all the way through for a goal kick. He's been. He's been quite secure, Kera. It was an issue, wasn't it? Who was going to play at right back for Germany? And, uh, and the West Ham man, who has played at right back, he's played in central defence for David Moyes this season. I think it works for Germany. They, they look, they look, look more solid than they said in the four. That's it for Ferran Torres. Eight minutes into the second half, and it looks like a tactical change because Ferran Torres is actually running off the field I mentioned that 6-0 last time Spain and Germany met he scored a hat-trick in that match Ferran Torres but that's it and so it's Alvaro Morata who's coming on so they're going to have their centre forward through the middle and on he comes and there's great applause actually from the Spanish supporters behind that goal to our left colourfully dressed in the red and yellow of course the national colours of Spain so Morata is on the much-travelled Alvaro Morata who did score the final goal, the, the, uh, the seventh goal against Costa Rica in the opening match. And uh, so Asensio has moved out towards the right-hand side, and Asensio takes the throw for Morata, who takes it on, down into the full-back position. Uh, but he is dispossessed, and Germany have it back and play it back to Rudiger inside the penalty area and we'll knock it across the six yard box to Manuel Neuer Spain nil Germany nil Neuer all in yellow down there passes it to Gnabry on the halfway line 
but Danny Olmo finds the ball at his feet and then can't do anything with it in Germany they've got it back and Morata of Spain is number 7 has gone directly into the number 9 position as, uh, as you just said there and uh, you know maybe an opportunity he's a uh, he, tactical opportunity he's got it now um, because it has been a lot of play across field and nothing sort of up towards the, the, uh, the German goal so Morata is on to win what is his 59 caps so 28 international goals with now 59 appearances throwing taken for Spain it's angled back towards the edge of the penalty area the Germany clear it and Simon is almost in the centre circle out of his penalty area so quickly to get there ahead of Muller and, and right foot volley of the way downfield out of play I don't know why you, uh, you sound so surprised <laughs> This is this is why he's playing. This is what this is the reason that David here is not involved. Because that he doesn't play like that. No, you and, see him. and Luis Enrique wants his goalkeeper to do that. Once his by by having a goalkeeper doing that, you can play a high line nearly up the halfway line. So anything that goes over the top, he will deal with that. And uh, it, it frees up other players to to uh, to keep possession. Spain with the ball inside the box back it comes again and he's played it out Simon and Germany have won it back and Gundogan is onto this onto his right foot plays it across super safe by Simon from the, the shot from Kimmich from inside the area and he's made up for his mistake there the, the, the footwork let the goalkeeper down the Spanish goalkeeper but he redeemed himself with the save to his right the, he, the thing is yeah he looks a little bit stupid in this situation giving the ball away but I think he has to play like that he's asked to play like that you can see how the players are running towards him asking for the ball the pass was not too bad but you know the pressure from Germany is very good but uh, and, and, and he ended up you know producing a very good save to keep the game at nil nil corner then to Germany I think this is their first corner yes it is Germany's first corner of the match from the left here's the delivery that is whipped into the near post and cleared away by Morata who is there in position to do exactly that with his right foot but it's come back to uh, the corner taker Kinney but he was dispossessed and Spain now will bring it forward towards the halfway line and actually that's quite blatant the challenge on uh, Asensio and out will come the yellow card and uh, there it is being shown very clearly over there to Goretzka who does the old puts his hands on his head bends his knees I can't believe that you've given that but it's a free kick I'm a little bit with him on that because the whole the whole the whole move it starts with the Asensio actually holding him back yeah. that's where the free kick starts from but, um, it's a little bit of a six of one half of the doesn't it the other but in the manner that Asensio goes down that doesn't do Goretzka any favours so second yellow for Germany there was a picture there on the, on the TV of Hansi Flick. He looks tired and under pressure, doesn't he? Well, he made a brilliant start, didn't he? To his, uh, his tenure in charge of Germany as uh, Spain had it. Danny Olmo will have a goal here from 25 yards, but straight at goalkeeper Neuer, who is headed just to drop down at the one knee and gather it securely in. So he's had uh, two incredible shots. Um, and then one not so good, but uh, you got to really, really hit them well to beat one of the best goalkeepers in the world, ever, from that distance. And that was straight at him. Spain nil, Germany nil. As uh, the ball falls for Germany in the centre circle, and it's Musiala who turns, and Musiala now runs towards the edge of the Spanish penalty area and uses Raum on the left in the full-back position, and Raum's cross is really poor. And Muller's in the middle. There are three Germans in the middle in the penalty area. And, and Muller turns to Raum and berates him. Yeah, he, he hasn't got a case there. I think Raum's doing really well there. He took a touch to his left and then across the ball straight away. It was a really, really good cross. But the, and this is it. Germany, the, the, they don't have an outright striker. So that instinct of actually thinking that the ball's going to end up there isn't with any of the German players. Uh, free kick for Spain Daniel Olmo was caught by Kimmich 
and the two of them slap hands but that's a yellow card for Kimmich I just thought it might be there you know and the, the body language of the referee suggested he did not like that challenge on Danny Olmo and as he walked over and I think that is a yellow card it was a stretch by Kimmich and uh, he caught him he was laid put him on the just above the ankle on the lower shin so a third yellow card for Germany but back to Hansi Flick down there in his bright white trainers he won his first eight matches as the German manager after taking over after the Euros from Joachim Löw as his side now come forward through the middle nice change of feet by Musiala who goes between two Spanish players you know he's really caught the eye again tonight this time it's he's fouled by uh, one of the youngsters on the Spanish side uh, Gabi the 18 year old so that's the 18 year old fouling the 19 year old and it's a free kick for Germany what, what, what a prospect he is for Germany Musiala so strong isn't he he, he could have as we, we said he could have played for England he's chosen to play for, for Germany and uh, I mean he as you say he's catching the eye what he's doing it's not it's not just that he's doing little tricks and stuff it's also his, his the selection of what he's doing nearly every decision he makes or has made in this game so far has been the correct one free kick Kimmich to take it and he's going to flight it in looking for Rudiger who again peeled away and found a position but it was all the hit from the free kick from Kimmich I'm afraid and all the way through goal kick Spain, Spain are very brave when they uh, defend those free kicks they're very high up the pitch and it takes it needs a very precise delivery if, if we've seen that in the first half it, it, if it happens well then it's dangerous for, for Spain Morata plays it out to the right hand side Musiala is there left footed ball right across the pitch to Dani Olmo who chests that down now and now into the penalty area in comes the challenge good one from Kera did well there against Dani Olmo inside the penalty area so he couldn't make any slips in there but he didn't dispossess Dani Olmo it's been a good contest that those two together they've each had little victories mm, and the, the moment it's Kera who's got the upper hand in that uh, duel now Spain again, Busquets this time to Danny Olmo. He's joined by Jordi Alba on the left-hand side. Jordi Alba's ball into the near post. Brilliant! Brilliant flick! With the outside of his boot, Morata! That was a centre-forward finish for Spain in the six-yard box. Flashed past Neuer, who hangs his head in disappointment. 1-0 Spain lead. What a fantastically well-worked goal. We're just talking about Danny Olmo losing the... Uh, the, uh, the duel with Kira. It wasn't Danny Olmo passing the ball, but it was from his side. He had he'd gone inside, left the space, and the pass into Morata was in perfect. We the, the television cameras are focusing on the Spanish players' celebration, but I can see right below the Spanish technical team was celebrating with the coach because he's just made that uh, decision to put him on, change. Changed it a little bit. Whoa, we've just seen that. What a great finish. The pass is perfect. And, and the run is a centre forward's run. He comes in with the outside of his foot and it puts it over Manuel Neuer nearly in the top corner. 1 0 Spain. The goal coming in the 62nd minute. So remember, it's not terminal if Germany lose this match tonight because of the Costa Rica victory earlier in the day. However, they would be going into the final group match against Costa Rica without a point. And now uh, the ball is played forward again for Spain, but uh, no is able to come out and pick this up. But, you know, for all of the talk of the false nines and, and whatever tactical thing that you do up front, sometimes you just can't beat having a centre forward. And Morata delivered. But Germany now coming forward, and that's a good header away from Jordi Alba at the other end, outside the box. Shot from Goretzka, that was blocked inside the penalty area. And then uh, Danny Olmo is fouled uh, by Kera, uh, by Gnabry, and that is a free kick to Spain on the edge of their own box. It's interesting to see how, how Germany are going to react to this. Are they going to make changes? Are they going to put more strikers on? He's got a few options on the bench, or will he be satisfied with a 1-0 defeat and take his chances against Costa Rica at the moment at the moment Spain are playing uh, in a way that if they take chances they leave too much space for them to play around in and of course with Morata on the pitch they've got a goal scorer as well 
So let's see what happens in the next 5-10 minutes. Well, I think what's interesting is having taken the lead, it looks like it's Luis Enrique who's going to make the two changes. Next, a double substitution. Coke is going to be one of them. So, you know, just to firm things up a bit in midfield, I think. And actually, they're playing it forward. Danny Olmo now up to the edge of the penalty area. Plays it square. It's allowed to run. Oh, what a chance for Asensio on the edge of the box. And he almost falling hits the shot. And he had time there. And he scooped it over the crossbar. And that was rather wasteful. It, it was rather wasteful. The ball was a little bit behind. It was passed along the 18-yard line. Uh, it was just a tiny little bit behind him. Um, and, yeah, he scooped it over the, the bar. Well, well, Germany, the team was split in two. Germany, half of the team was running back trying to defend. Half of the team stayed up. So it's like they are going to take some chances now. Well, it's uh, Nico Williams who's coming on as well for Spain the uh, the winger from Athletic Bilbao so it is a double change and uh, first of all coming off for Spain it is uh, Asensio so that was his last contribution so his place is going to be taken by Nico Williams on the right wing and uh, the other change you'll see Gavi come off so the, uh, the right side of central midfielder the Barcelona man and on comes the great Atletico Madrid captain Coque absolutely part of the furniture at uh, Atletico Madrid almost 600 appearances for, for Atletico Madrid's first team so double change that's three changes that Luis Enrique has made now Germany coming forward but that comes to nothing as uh, Muziala took it into the penalty area but it got away from him and it's through for a goal kick and um, the other thing as well great celebrations as there would be when Spain scored that goal Luis Enrique jumping around in jubilation but many of his coaching staff and the players going to him in there and he did say before the match today Germany just playing the ball Spain playing the ball out from the back and it's hit long downfield into the centre circle where uh, Zula heads it forward but Spain are on for this and it is four against four and now Morata through the middle trying to take the ball into his path actually swept it beyond himself and through to goalkeeper Noah we've got so much space now Spain um, and, and uh, Morata is now in between the two centre half Zule and, and Rudiger trying to outrun them uh, this time Zule just got a foot to it nearly perfect pass 1-0 Spain lead Germany thought they'd taken the lead towards the end of the first half when Rudiger headed in but the semi-automated offside ruled that one out so just the one goal so far and it's gone to Spain that excellent finish sort of flashing finish in the six yard box with his right foot past uh, Manuel Neuer by Alvaro Morata what a fantastic what a fantastic well worked goal the, the, the passing in that move was just really really good and uh, that final pass into Morata it was imperfect it was at the right pace it was the right angle and it was just imperfect for his outside foot to chip, not chip it in but on the outside foot nearly in the top corner over Neuer so that is uh, his second goal scored in both matches at this World Cup never played in a World Cup before and now two goals in two appearances and with that he is in the conversation for the golden boot isn't he certainly playing for this Spanish team who could go a long way in the tournament Spain with Nico Williams on the right hand side having just come on he's challenged and the boys have a play for throwing Germany are going to make substitutions yeah, now two. I think he's going to put three players on Zane is one of them Leroy Zane who's had an injury who's doubtful for this game the former Manchester City man a knee injury but is among the substitutes today and looks as though he's about to get involved in the action for the first time uh, Lucas Klosterman as well the defender is there and uh, also it is Nicholas Fulton who is going to come on a Spain played forward for Morata but now will uh, come and reach that first with his right foot and loft it away downfield Gundogan playing it past Busquets and then carrying the ball to the outside but winning a throw in F. Jordi Alba. I think they'll see the changes now. So looking forward to seeing Nicholas Fulkrug live. Not done that before. He's sort of been propelled into the picture here. And uh, first of all, though, Germany are going to take off Gundogan. 
that's an interesting choice. Yeah, he came out. He came out in the first game as well. I wonder if if uh, if he feels that he can play uh, 90 minutes. Uh, Thomas Muller coming off as well, so Fulcrum will re replace Thomas Muller and uh, Kera is also coming off, so Flosterman will play at right back in place of Kera. So Kera, Muller and Gundogan are the three two to leave the field, so a triple change for Germany. Spain 1, Germany 0. And this is a scoreline that, uh, mathematically, it wouldn't be certain that, that Spain had clinched their place in the last 16, but it would be one of those, they're all but through because of their superior goal difference in the group and the fact that they would have six points out of six. So they will confirm their place uh, almost certainly when it comes to the final matches on uh, Thursday. And Spain will play Japan, who will have plenty to play for. Germany with the ball in front of their own penalty areas out to the left hand side and then uh, it, back it comes to Neuer in the penalty area passing it out from the back to Zula and then forward into the centre circle now to the right hand side to the, the newly arrived Leroy Zane who started on the right flank and Zane uh, plays it but it's blocked by the defender and then Danny Olmo is onto that forward again no Muziala Muziala just outside the box to his left to Zane square from Zane it's allowed to run by Goretzka Raum is onto the ball then the ball now over on the left hand side which is given away groans from the German supporters and actually Spain could be away on the counter attack Morata plays it to Williams and Williams now takes it into the German half but there's little support there from anyone in red and Williams has taken it up to the edge of the box and flips it across the penalty area a bit into the path of Zula who will get it away yeah we're, we're in for an interesting uh, ending to this game Germany are going for it they're committing people forward and uh, of course that leaves a lot of room for Spain to counter and uh, mm. they only have two Germany only got to get it wrong one time then they're 2-0 down so let's see what happens so full crook through the middle Muziala playing just off him in the number 10 position so he's, he's moved into the position that Gundogan was playing we've got Zane on the right and Gnabry has gone across to the left hand side now Spain 1 Germany 0 5 Live and BBC Sounds live from Qatar here inside the Albeit Stadium Musiala on the right hand side he's done well again he's got past Dani Olmo and Musiala plays it into the middle and Fulkrug was there and he managed to get around Rodri but he stumbled, the ball bounced off him and wide and behind in a goal kick. And precisely like Spain to, uh, put Morata on, uh, a number nine, a true number nine, Fulcrook just showed himself as that as well. Germany haven't had that option at all, uh, all the way throughout this game. It was a great cross into the box. It could have been 1-1, it should have been 1-1, and if not, it should have been a corner. Yeah. So, Spain won, Germany nil. Fulcrook who's a big guy, six foot two, the Werder Bremen striker, ten goals this season, the ball's played through to Musiala who shoots, it hits Simon, there is no offside flag, the ball is headed away from near the penalty spot, still in the area, Gnabry tries a snapshot from the left side of the box, no offside flag, the uh, corner is given Germany's way, and it just feels that those changes have lifted Germany. Yes, absolutely, there's a bit of youth, there's a bit of technique, there's a bit of pace coming on the pitch, uh, and, but th this is a, a massive chance, it's uh, Musiala who gets a chance, he's played so well, I would have wished for him to have put that in the back of the net, but uh, great goalkeeping. Here's the corner, uh, but it's headed up and over the top by Fulcrook, who managed to find a position for that, but couldn't direct it down and on target. But he's already had two chances, Fulcrook, since coming onto the game, um, and, uh, and that was a big opportunity for Musiala. Yeah, taken. we're just seeing the angle from behind the goal here. He act, he, he's one and one with Simon, but he actually kicks it straight at him. I think anything low either side of the goalkeeper, he would have gone in. Uh, Spain take it away, and now we're seeing exactly what Peter Schmeichel suggested in that uh, space is potentially opening up for Spain when they come forward. So uh, back they go to the halfway line through Danny Olmo. But uh, he, he's quite um, rugged, isn't he? Fulcrook, the number nine, 
who uh, was promoted with Werder Bremen last season so he was in playing in the second tier in Bundesliga 2 last season he's, yeah. he's come from almost nowhere really because of the dearth and because of injuries as well Timo Werner's injured and not able to play at this World Cup so in he comes and now he's involved in a crucial match for Germany yeah, in Germany, historically, they've had players, you know, of that side, I don't even remember, Horst Rubisch, yes. who, uh, who actually did really well for Germany. It's an option, you can, you can pass the ball up to him. He's physically strong. Ball's played through to Maratta, there's no flag, takes it into the area on the right-hand side, he's got a lot to do against Zula, plays it though to Williams on the edge of the box, who took a heavy touch, but Spain and Williams still in possession, and then, well, that's the latest flag of the night, calm down, Peter, I think you're going to self-combust here, but it is given <laughs> as an offside flag, and uh, Germany have given it away though, so Spain are back in possession, back it comes centrally, Pedri out to the left-hand side, and... Uh, and Luis Enrique is uh, extremely animated as the ball comes out towards this side of the field just in front of it. I do remember Horst Rubesch, uh, Peter. I remember being allowed to stay up and watch the 1980 European Championship final when I think Horst Rubesch scored the winner. He did. He, and, and, and sometimes it's good to have a player like that, someone who can, who can fight for the ball if you have to go... You know, in the last five, six, seven, eight minutes, you have to you know, try to bombard with long balls into the area. Someone who can take that fight up and then whatever drops down, somebody else could be there. Um, so, I've had a few though over the years. I was just thinking Oliver Bierhoff, who's been involved in the German setup for a long, long time. And even Karsten Janka. Do you oh, remember him? Yeah, Karsten Janka, Bayern <laughs> Munich. I remember him very, very well. Played against him many times. Yeah. He was uh, uncomplicated, wasn't he? He has 15 minutes to go, so the goal difference comes into play for sure the way it is now. So what, what's Germany going to do? Are they going to go all out to get a goal? Or, and leave Spain all the, sp the space? Let them come at them? Yes, Gnabry on the left-hand side. And... Uh, and it comes to the halfway line to Riediger. The other thing is, with this scoreline, Spain won, Germany nil. That means that Spain and Japan could draw their final match and Germany would be out, whatever they do. So, um, there are lots of things to think about here. Germany, Germany are pressing down the left-hand side with Round. Round takes it past Williams, but uh, it gets away from him. I think the final touch though was off the Spaniards so it was played away by uh, Carvajal but Germany have won it back with Gnabry and here's the cross but he uh, it was out of place as the referee it should have been given a, it, it was a throw in which is going to be taken on the far side for Spain Spain won Germany nil I mean Germany are going to be it's going to be a perilous situation for them and yes they've got Costa Rica in their final match but um the table will not look pretty for them if this is the final scoreline. No, well, we've seen, you know, historically again, we've seen teams struggle in, in the group phase and only just sneak through um, into the next stages, the knockout stages, and then go on to win it. Um, go back to, is it Italy in 82? Was it Italy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In three points. In yes, the, that's right. And then they ended up winning the World Championship. So it's happened before, um, but as you say, with this goal line, a draw between Spain and Japan, yeah, it doesn't matter what Germany then do. Musiala playing oh. it in field, but that's in between the two, his two teammates, and Busquets was able to say thank you very much, and then uh, the ball is put out of play by Kimmich for throwing to Spain 15 yards inside their own half. Busquets again yeah, in excellent. that central midfield role has been absolutely magnificent yeah. today. It doesn't look of much, but he's here, there, and everywhere, protecting his uh, his defenders and also taking part in open play. Yeah, Busquets winning what is his 141st cap tonight. Only Sergio Ramos and Ika Casillas have no caps for Spain. Germany coming forward though, and it's Zula who's joined the attack. And now Zane slips it between two Spanish players. Back to Zane again, who did very well to take the ball on into the penalty area, but he was off balance and he ended up as the challenge came in on the ground and the ball had gone. 
for Germany now with full crook. There's real urgency here. And the number nine runs into, uh, well, he's blocked, according to the referee, on the edge of the penalty area. And it's going to be a free kick to the Germans, three or four yards outside the box. They're actually appealing for a penalty here. Uh, a handball? handball by, oh, Ooh. yes, it Ooh, is. Now then. It's a handball by Busquets. And the VAR should have a look at this. Well, it, it seemed to strike... I mean, it depends how much they feel that the, the hand was in a natural position yeah. and how close it was as well, the proximity. The ball was knocked up by Zane, but it seemed to me as though Busquets... There seemed to be a motion towards it, or whether that was just the way his arm was naturally swinging. It's very difficult to judge. And we, of course, we have the luxury of seeing that back in slow motion. Um, well, they, 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 they must have looked at it and decided yeah. no. Mm. So the appeal, make a note of it anyway. When I saw it in slow motion, I thought that was a penalty. I thought the DAR would have a look at it. Would have a look at it. Um, However, it's a free kick after the uh, the foul by Rodri. So it's a free kick in a good position that is struck into the wall by Kimmich from the angle towards the left-hand side and from there the wall did its job deflected it wide of the goal and out towards the corner flag so a German corner from the left-hand side and uh, time running out for Germany in this match Alvaro Morata gave them the lead in the 62nd minute we now have less than 10 minutes to play in comes the corner which is headed away by Morata comes out to Zane but Zane trying to pushing the ball across has given it straight away to Spain and they're off on the counter attack with Williams but uh, good work good pace actually from round to get back there with Williams it was a good chase that good race between the two of them and the German left back got there first another Spanish chase played really well today round really yes. really well he has and uh, full crook gets up and wins the header and uh, and it leaves Rodri on the ground I think he might have landed on him. Uh, Jordi Alba it is actually, who um, is feeling the base of his back. And in, it, in any case, he's going to be substituted because Alejandro Balde is going to come on to replace him. So he is the, the number 14 for Spain. And this is his second cap, having been drafted in as a late replacement in this squad for Jose Gaia so the 19 year old who has uh, made great strides this season for Barcelona is going to replace Jordi Alba his club mate who's um, putting under real pressure actually on the home front so he's got it he's very often taken his place in the Barcelona team and now he's replaced him in the Spanish team so Alejandro Balde who only made his first team debut in September and here we are in November and he's playing for Spain in the World Cup that's a story 19 years old Germany coming forward and he obviously is trusted by Luis Enrique to come into this for Germany with full clock and he scored brilliant super finish and the German number 9 has come to the rescue of Hansi Flick and his team the big bustling Nicholas Fulcrub what a finish that was high above Simon and it's Spain 1 Germany 1 and again this was a goal created by substitutes Sane who's made an impact from, from coming on got the ball passed it in to is it Musiala yes Musiala and then Fulcrock got the ball from an angle and he absolutely smashed it up in the top corner no chance for Simon what an impact the substitutions have had in this game 1-1 one, one. that was right foot wallop my goodness he hit that hit it high into the roof of the net beyond Simon and what a way to score your first goal at a World Cup I mean he was nowhere he was nowhere near the squad when, uh, when I saw Germany just a couple of months ago in the Nations League no one was talking about Nicholas Fulkrug and here we are in Doha and he's just scored for Germany and the celebrations on the, on the German bench Hansel Flick and his coaching staff were congratulating themselves with of course the goal but it came from the substitute and Germany are making a substitution now yep. Coming on in 
into the midfield and uh, yes Serge Gnabry is making way so Gnabry who started on the right moved to the left so Jonas Hoffman is uh, is coming on I saw him score for, uh, for Germany against England in Munich in June in the Nations League and Hoffman takes up a position out towards the left hand side so that is where Gnabry was playing latterly in the match so Jonas Hoffman after Borussia Mönchengladbach is uh, into the action score Spain 1 Germany 1 so that does change things tightens it up again Spain would have four points Germany would have one and Japan and Costa Rica both with three in between them. so uh, Germany will feel a lot better about themselves after that and the ball is out of play for uh, a goal kick Spanish player has gone down Coldplay was though he's been collapsed not sure what happened there he's just holding his face Rudiger was involved in there it was an arm well, it wasn't a great play in that Peter we have been treated to a fantastic contest there contest um, a lot of technical skills at the highest level um, and also this excitement seeing new players as uh, Germany come forward they're thinking about perhaps getting a second goal now the ball through the middle that was for Hoffman and for Musiala to chase but Spain just about dealt with that uh, Germans are going to make another change as well Nico Schlotterbeck who was left out today after the opening match Schlotterbeck the uh, central defender Spain playing it forward they've been unsettled by that conceding a goal for the first time at this World Cup 83rd minute so as the Spanish lead lasted for just over 20 minutes so Schlotterbeck will uh, come on to replace Raul so uh, three central defenders now it would look like Ram coming off from left back and Schlotterbeck coming on to play perhaps as the left sided central defender we'll see so uh, on he comes and uh, Ram has left the field on the far side so Spain 1, Germany 1 just over three minutes to play Five Live Sports tonight will be on air for another hour or so to round up the day's action in the World Cup Five Live Breakfast will be back on air 6am in the morning with Rick Edwards here in Qatar and uh, I hear that Chris Sutton will be taking on the Bordeaux Challenge in the morning I noticed that they didn't ask you to do that when you were on Five Live Breakfast Peter how many did you get? I haven't done it yet yes I managed to avoid it but uh, I, I was listening I was actually standing should never by. say that on air <laughs> I was standing by to come on after you and I was thinking he's going to do it here but you never did so uh, still less time yet it's a long tournament well I've heard a lot of excuses I've got my own I thought the questions were being asked too slow ah uh, right ok Spain won Germany won you're not the first person to say that is it? <laughs> throwing for Spain and uh, forward it goes towards the halfway line and deflected out of play Germany has stayed forward in the back so not, not a tactical change basically not just energy I think uh, I thought Ram has played very well he's, he's been up and down up and down um, so maybe there was nothing left in the tank for him yeah they have stuck to the back four haven't they just uh, shot about playing as the left back well, Spain play to the halfway line bounces into the centre circle comes back to Rudiger and Rudiger taps it forward less than two minutes to play now and Germany you can tell here from the body language the way that they scored that goal the way that it's lifted them they, they are thinking they might be able to snatch this it's a very well crafted goal it all came from Leroy Sainan his move we've got the ball on the right hand side and on his left foot went in field and then that square pass in to Muziala who left it left it for Fulcro who came around him and the, and the finish was just fantastic smashed it up in the top corner the far corner no chance for the goalkeeper yeah he's, uh, he's got a he's got a touch of the bygone days about him full Krug. he's missing a tooth so they call him in Germany Luca which is the German for gap and now the ball's played through for Morata inside the penalty area on the right but good tackle from Schlotterbeck who slid in there having just come onto the field and that was danger danger because Morata was getting ready to shoot he had to time that right Morata was one and one with uh, with Manuel Neuer only 
six, seven yards from goal. But what a tackle. And he got it in perfect right. Anything wrong there, and Spain would have got a penalty for sure. Super tackle with his left foot curling it around Morata. <laughs> and uh, they're just showing us the replay there. And he sort of punched the air in celebration that he'd made the tackle. Well done. Well done, Lucas. Corner taken short by Spain. Williams. And then uh, in comes the challenge on him from Kinnick. But Spain's still in possession. It comes infield. Little ball straight towards the edge of the box. And all knows onto that, into the area. But Kinnick did well, actually, as well. Good defending Germany. And it's cleared away towards the, the halfway line. Spain will start again. We're in the uh, 90th minute now. Actually, the fourth official will be coming forward with the board. Uh, here, here we go. And it's six minutes, I can see. They've already put it up. Six minutes to play. Six minutes to decide if there is going to be a winner in this match between the two former World Cup winners. Spain passing it forward out towards the right hand side. And then a uh, little ball to Koke. Koke goes back behind it to Rodri. And crossed it in Ritter Port. And uh, Rodri has a little look forward, thinks about the long pass, but then goes square. And they're just going to take the sting out of this a little bit, I think, Spain here. Because Germany, with the goal, gathered some momentum in the match. And uh, Spain are looking just to calm things down again. Because a draw, of course, is absolutely, absolutely fine for them. They know that uh, if they win against Japan in the final matches in the group, and they both played at the same time, of course, on Thursday, they will go through as group winners. Spain with Danny Olmo now on the left hand side Olmo goes back into his own half to Laporte and then uh, back it goes again into the heart of defence what happens if uh, if Japan beats Spain and Germany still wins against Costa Rica then it's Japan Spain isn't it uh, as the ball comes to the edge of the penalty area it's cleared away by Germany on the edge of the box yeah, if Germany will not have four points then Spain will have four points Japan with four points at six so uh, that would be down to goal score goal score and that uh, well it would be goal difference wouldn't it Germany you know, the, uh, uh, Spain have got the, the massively greater goal difference so, so Germany uh, Spain are in a very strong position regardless here's Danny Olmo cutting in from the left hand side in comes the challenge but uh, the goal is cleared away up towards Musiala but it is a free kick that is given Germany's way. Free kick near the edge of their box. I thought Nicholas, I think Nicholas Zula today has played exceptionally well. Um, I thought he looked very, very heavy in the first game against Japan. But today he's really defended well. Every decision he's made has been the correct one. Nicholas slot about with a good cross field pass to Musiala. Leroy Zane is going to take this on but Spain have got plenty of bodies back behind the ball now centrally Goretzka shuffles it to the left hand side to Schlotterbeck now back to Rudiger and square from him to Zula we've had almost three minutes of added time six have been indicated the ball's headed back oh that's a cheap one that's a cheap corner what a silly thing by to do. oh it's a silly thing silly thing to do this, this is when when it's in your DNA always to keep the ball the, the ball is crossed from uh, maybe 30 yards out uh, and, and at, at a very direct angle and if he leaves it it might it might go out for a throw in and he tries to head it back to Simon and what he's done instead is headed it out and Germany now have a corner kick and you think about the players Germany have uh, Fulko, Zule, Rudiger in there this is a great chance for Germany yeah, and the big substitutes as well with Klosterman and Schlotterbeck having come onto the field and I mean Carvajal could have done almost anything with that but headed it behind so it is a corner for Germany from the left and the referee you can hear the whistle that uh, and he's just coming across referee McAlee to have a word for something he's seen in the six yard box so right hang on to your hats Germany with a corner Full Crook makes a run to the near post here's the delivery to the back post Rudiger was after it but defender jumped in front of him and Rudiger didn't get there and in actual fact it was beyond everyone bounced through and out for a throw in over here on the right hand side and the Spanish player has gone down it's Busquets 
back on his feet now though and it's going to, to Germany throwing for Germany on the edge of the uh, six yard box Klosterman is going to take this just takes a couple of steps back he's got three short options and he uses the Musiala option Williams is back in there and Williams wins it from Musiala clears it Rudiger just hoists it straight up in the air almost two Germans go for it I think there was a clash of heads in there so the referee should stop play he hasn't Musiala plays it to the left hand side Spain are going to break away Williams is now carrying it downfield and in comes the challenge and that's a good one as well Goretzka what a, yeah, what a if, if that's a save there Schroederbeck has passed it forward and now this could open up for Germany Simon comes out the ball's pulled back Fulkrug's in the middle but it might actually have been carried behind by Leroy Zane was it or did he pull it back in time it's no, a, he corner, didn't. a corner I mean it's made such a difference that uh, Leroy Zane has come on the pitch if he hasn't been fit he certainly looks fit now he may, may just have made the wrong decision there to go with his left foot go left he should have maybe cut in or finished the ball, but he's managed to uh, to get Germany another corner, and it, again, it's another opportunity for Germany to get all the points here. I must say, that looked like that ball was over the line before Zani pulled it back, but it, it has been ruled not to have been, so it is a German corner into the six-yard box. What a good catch by goalkeeper Simon. What a good catch, and that is it. That's the last action. I made that 15 seconds early, but uh, the final whistle has gone. It has finished Spain 1, Germany 1. So Spain's destiny with this is very much in their own hands. Germany are still in it, but they're bottom of the group going into the final round of matches. So Spain 4 points, Japan and Costa Rica 3. Germany won so they've got their first point and the two coaches there Luis Enrique and Hansi Flake just embrace down on the side of the pitch what do you think Peter Schmeichel I, I think we retreated to a great game of football uh, the players that played they gave everything a lot of uh, fantastic play uh, especially by Spain but Germany also had some really good moves we've seen some young players in action today the one that really caught my eye was Musiala how well did he play what a great great player he he promises to be I also have to say the Dutch referee today he helped the game by the line that he he, he was laying for this I, I, he let it go and it it just became a much much better uh, game of football because of that his decisions were spot on uh, but I have to say I am well impressed by Germany how they reacted to what happened a couple of days ago and of course we saw Spain under pressure they are good enough to deal with that so if Spain win and Germany win on the final night of matches, they're both through. Spain will win the group, Germany will finish second. But I guess Japan and Costa Rica might have something to say about that. But we'll see on the final night of Group E, which will be on Thursday. But uh, that's it tonight. A draw. Spain won, Germany won.